Hello, I am William Rowe, and this is the Module 4 video blog about digital identity for IDS 403. I sat down to catalog my digital identity, specifically how I'm digital. I have a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat accounts. Twitter, I used to follow the Hollister Police Department and the San Francisco Giants. I don't post. Instagram and Snapchat allow me to see what my own children are doing. I don't post. I use Facebook to stay connected to long distance friends and family. I post to Facebook. Tim Rayner got me thinking about Facebook as a digital panopticon. There's a lot that I self edit based on who my audience is or who I think is viewing my posts. I want their approval of me as a person. When I get likes, there's the self affirmation that I have a valid idea or funny jokes. Because of subjectification, my digital identity is of someone that is more fun, I think, than my real world self. I think it's the same in all demographic stuff. I don't pose as someone else, like Sherry Trickle's subject, Audrey. As Sherry Trickle notes, conversations happen in real time, and it's challenging because you can't always control what you're going to say. Communicating via text or posts allows one to present the persona that we want to be. We get to edit. This allows me to really think about what I want to say. I have a really hard time verbally responding sometimes. I can't think of the words. There's a French saying that translates into the wit of the staircase, which means thinking of the perfect retort too late. Does it have to? I don't live online. I hope that my digital identity is close to who I am as a person. Coming later in life to the game, the technology wasn't there to help me or cause me to go through identity formation online. I definitely need to be more aware of my relationship with technology. Thinking about profile pictures I've used in the past, I've always used the best photos or pictures that might start a conversation with my friends or even to show off experiences I've had. Currently is a horned devil named Mr. Rowe that an angry student drew on my whiteboard. I received a lot of approval from my Facebook friends over it, so to them, the identity I formed is that of a strict educator. I spent last weekend with several friends who were all on Facebook. It was refreshing that no one had their devices out when we were having conversations. They did come out when we went to lunch, ironically, causing us to be alone together. While we were waiting for food, we were focusing only on what was important to us individually at the time. As I've said before, I seek valuation and approval from my online friends. I have to self-edit so as not to make them feel uncomfortable. I also am able to edit my identity by editing my responses and create a performance that caters to my audience of friends. I am a public persona. I teach high school. Fortunately, not in the same town where I live. Online, in private, among friends, I can tell off-color jokes or talk about a party I attended or discuss family. I'm more reserved in public. I have to be much more conservative. I don't talk about politics or religion or any other controversial subject. As a teacher, I really have to be aware that whatever comes out of my mouth may get repeated at not my dinner table. Online, I'm able to open up more, but only because of my audience of friends. In terms of public posting, like on Twitter, there seem to be many guards watching. In the summer 2016 Vanity Fair, there is an article in which James Walcott suggests that Twitter has become so toxic that people are becoming afraid to use it due to increasing negative responses. I have a sense of who I am, which is different than my digital identity. I need to be self-reflective about digital versus offline identity. I have to ask myself, do I want there to be a difference? I really am not online that much but I would like the identities to align.